Hello, good morning. Welcome back again. And we are dealing with economics lesson number two. And I hope you remember the last class, especially the story of two boys that we learned who lived in the same village but became different persons. One became a very well trained human resource, another one became a very weak human resource, or we can say he became a liability. So let us learn from that what is the importance of formation of human resources, what is the importance of training or in putting inputs into the human being so that they can turn out to be a very valuable human resources. So let us continue with that. So in the two case studies we saw yesterday, Sakhal went to school and Vilas did not go. Sakhal was physically strong and healthy. He did not need to visit a doctor frequently. Vilas was patient of arthritis. He liked the means to visit the doctor. Sakhal acquired a degree in computers. Sakhal found a job in the private firm while Vilas continued with the same work as his mother. He earned a meager income like his mother to support a family. And in the case of Sakhal, several years of education added to the quality of labor. This enhances total productivity. Total productivity adds to the growth of the economy. This in turn pays in individual through salary or in some other form of his choice. In case of Villas, there could not be any education or health care in the early part of his life. And he spends his life selling fish like his mother. Henceforth, he draws the same salary of unskilled labor as his mother. So we compare the life of the, those two boys. One was sickly and one was healthy. So the sickly fellow, he was not interested in going to school. And he had no money to you know, get treatment or improve his health and he continued to be sick throughout his life. At the end his mother also became sick and he had to go for that unskilled work selling of fish that anybody can do, no need any special training. So he had to do that and he had to get very little income. That is a disadvantage. You do the unskilled work, ordinary work and your pay will be less. And the person who are skilled, they will be given high salary, they will be getting high skill work. And investment in human resource via education and medical care can give high rates of return in the future. So we saw in the case of Sakal Day, they made investment, they gave him education, they gave him training and in the future he got good salary, high salary and he was able to get by more than what he invested. So that is what can happen in the case of human beings. If you put a lot of inputs or if you give, make a lot of investments, we are going to get by it in the future. And this investment on people, the same as investment in land and capital. One invests in shares and bonds expecting higher returns in the future. So that is business. People who are doing business, they do a lot of investment. They buy a lot of things, thinking that in the future we can sell by again. If you buy a land today for 1000 rupees, after 5 years we can sell it by maybe for a higher price. So we have to invest, that is called investment, with an eye on profit in the future. We may not get high profit immediately and wait patiently. After some time, we will get high, high profit. The same way, if you invest money on people, especially now you are children, you are learning, your parents are investing a lot of money on you. They are giving you a lot of education, they are giving you a lot of facilities and so on. So they are investing a lot of money. Why? Because they know as you grow up, you will become a skilled person. You will become a healthy person. You will become a knowledgeable person, a learned person and you will be able to get job, you will be able to bring by a lot of income to the family, you will be able to produce a lot of things and so on. So that is the investment your parents are making and like the case of a Sakal, the boy, you will be able to get 
good job, good salary, and so on. That is a, a expectation of your parents, and so they are ready to invest money now, hoping you will get, they will get buy more than what they spend. So you also have to cooperate with them. You also should have the interest to do all those things. Otherwise, you will be like you will be sad. You will have no interest for study, and you will be wasting your life. But if you are like Sakhal, then you will be making use of every opportunity that you get and you will be able to uh, fulfill the dreams of your parents and you will become a useful asset, a useful resource for the society. And a child too with investments made on her education and health can yield a high return in the future in the form of higher earnings and greater contribution to the society. So the little investment that we make on a child, we may think, oh, this is small child, no need to take care. But the investment that we give to a child, maybe for education, maybe for give, providing good health, that will be a very great investment for the future. If you take care of the health of a child, then in the future he may have good health, he may not fall sick very often and will be able to contribute to the society. <coughs> Educated parents are found to invest, found, found to invest more heavily on the education of their child. So, if the parents are educated, they know the value of education, and they will spend a lot of money so that their children also will get educated. But a person who is not educated, he will think, "Oh, what is the need of education? It is not so important. Let my son do something else." So, depends on the parents. If the parents are educated, they want their children also to be educated. So that knowledge is important. The importance of education, the importance of knowledge should be made known to others. If they are ignorant about it, then they will not be able to get benefit from that. And this is because they have realized the importance of education for themselves. They are also conscious of proper nutrition and hygiene. They accordingly look after their children's needs for education at school and good health. A virtuous cycle is thus created in this case. In contrast, a vicious cycle may be created by disadvantaged parents who themselves uneducated and lacking in hygiene keep their children in the similarly disadvantaged state. So, the, how the children will come up into somehow depends on the parents. The parents are educated, they want their children also to be educated. If the parents are not educated, they are not important, aware about the importance of good health, they are not aware about the importance of skill, learning, all that. Then they will think, oh my child also no need, and let them be like me. So, depends on the parents, how educated they are, how trained they are, how aware, well aware about the need of human formation or human resource formation depends on and the parents the children will become. And countries like Japan have invested in human resource. They do not have any natural resource. These countries are developed or rich countries. So in the case of uh, Japan, if you take, it is one of the smallest countries and they don't have any natural resource also there. They are very poor country. They are not very rich in natural resource. But they have become a developed country. They are very rich by now. Early they were very poor because of lack of natural resources and so on. No minerals, no nothing else. But what they did was they made investment in human resource. So they trained their people. They provided education for them. Knowledge, skill training. And they took care of the health of the people. And so the people themselves became a very good resource. They were able to make so many things. Since they are trained, since they are skilled, they are able to do a lot of work in the computer section. They are able to do, develop a lot in the IT technology and so on. So their people are very highly talented and they are able to produce a lot of things. That is how Japan became a very rich country, a developed country. Because we know in the market if you go, there are so many electronic things are they made in Japan. Because they are highly talented in that. They train their children in that way. So they became a trained persons and they are able to make more so many things, manufacture so many things, and the country became a developed country. 
and they import natural resources needed for their country. How did they become rich or developed? They have invested on people, especially in the field of education and health. And these people have made efficient use of their resources like land and capital, efficiency and the technology evolved by people have made these countries rich and developed. So how do we understand the development of Japan or other small countries like Japan? They have become developed. They do not have natural resources. They do not have the essential things that they are required. But what they did was they imported, they bought from other countries and then they gave opportunity for their children to learn. They sent them to school, they sent them to training school and special courses like computer and other IT technology, everything they learned and so they became a really a such in the future. In the beginning they were very poor but they, they kept on investing, they gave a lot of uh, ideas, inputs and at the end they became fruitful and today Japan is one of the developed countries, they are one of the richest countries. So that is the advantage of investing on human beings. They gave good education to their children, they gave good health to the children and they became a set to the nation, to the family, to the society and so on. So that is how we need to do. So human beings are the most important resource. If you don't take care of them when they are young, then it will be a waste we can say. They will become a liability. Instead of producing something for the country, others will have to produce for them. So they will be only using what others are producing. So that should not happen. So that we can produce something more, everyone can contribute something more in the high level so that the country as a whole will develop. And like Japan, we also can become a rich country. So we have got more people and therefore we have more opportunity, more possibility than Japan. We can become a highly developed society, highly developed country if we invest a lot properly in the human beings. I hope you understood. So let us proceed to the next point. Economic activity by men and women. So what are the economic activities that we take care of by men and women? Economic activity by men and women. So let us see in our own society what kind of activities are we doing for our livelihood men and women. Are they doing same work or are they doing different works? Let us try to find out. So like with Vilas and Sakas, people have been engaged in various activities. We saw Vilas sold fish and Sakal got a job in the pub. So we saw the difference between to the boys. Vilas, he did not go for studies therefore all the, job, the only job that he could get was his mother's job that is selling fish. But because he studied and he got trained and he got a job in the firm, in the company. The various activities have been classified into three main sectors that is primary, secondary and tertiary. That is very important in underline. All the activities of human beings, they have been classified into three groups. One is primary. Secondary and tertiary. So these are the three types of activities that people are involved. Primary activities, secondary activities and tertiary activities. So all the work that we do, it will be falling in either of these or any of these three categories. Let us see in detail what are the uh, activities which is done under these three categories. Primary sector includes agriculture, forestry, animal husbandry, fishing, poultry farming and mining. So all the activities that are done on the earth we can say. For example farming, we do farming, we do on the cultivation on the land. Then so agriculture, forestry, planting trees, looking after the forest, 
then planting other trees then animal husbandry growing animals cows bulls other livestock looking after all this that is also part of part of this primary sector then fishing people who are involved in fishing that is also part of this primary sector then poultry farming people who are looking after birds like chicken and other things that is also primary sector and mining mining out the minerals the coal and so all the activities that are taking place on the earth that is cultivation uh, farming looking after the animals livestock or fishing or mining all these will come under primary activities then let us see what are the activities in the secondary quarrying and manufacturing is included in the secondary sector so second one it will be quarrying quarrying and manufacturing so quarrying and manufacturing is included in the secondary activity so mainly it is concerned with production production of things in the factory so here this is the production and here it is on all the works on the land primary activities all the activities that are done on the land will be called primary activities and the activities that are done with production manufacturing that will be considered as secondary sector and trade transport communication banking education health tourism services insurance etc are included in the tertiary sector so what are the things included in the tertiary sector you can say service all the service activities what are the service activities like trade people who are selling things they are doing trade they are doing service then transport they are driving vehicle for doing service to others to carry people from one place to another or people who are doing communication service people who are working in the offices telephone offices or post office they are all doing service to others then those who are working in the education department or bank department or health department or tourism services and insurance all that so all they are not producing anything they are there to help others to do service for others to help others so all that will be under tertiary sector so these are the three types of works people will be doing either they will be working on the land that is called primary sector can be farming can be growing animals can be growing chickens and other birds or looking at planting trees and looking after that is forestry or can be doing the mining or maybe doing like a, a mining fishing fishing also is part of the primary sector so all these are the then here it will be quarry like you breaking the stones and so on so though it is on the earth stone is on the earth but they break the stone stone and produce something else then manufacturing so many things that are made in the factory all that will come under secondary sector then all the other services people who are working in the offices they are doing this tertiary sector activities and the activities in this sector results in the production of goods and services and these activities add value to the national income and these activities are called economic activity so all these activities all these three types of activities that people do they add income to the society they add income to the country and the national income comes up so when all these people are doing different different works they are able to produce something here they produce something and here they produce something and here they produce service so for all that there is 
income value is there and they are able to produce something and that helps the growth of the country especially the economic growth of the country and therefore they are called economic activity so all these activities that people are doing that is called economic activities because they are able to produce something and that production or that service that they do able to bring income to the country and therefore it is all economic activities and economic activities have two parts market activities and non market activities so we said all these rules that people do they are economic activities and now economic activities can be divided into two one is market activities and another one is non market activities market and non market so economic activity market and non market so market activities and non market activities there are two types so from the name is so we can understand what is market and what is non market activities the things that we produce and we take it to the market for selling that will be market activity and the things that we produce and we use at home for our own purpose without for not for selling that will be non market activity so we can underline two types of activities that uh, two types of economic activities market activities as well as non market activities market activities involve remuneration to anyone who performs that is activity performed for pay or profit so all the market activities will be able to get the reward money so market activities we do it for money we do it for profit if you are producing something we go and sell it in the market and we get money or if you are manufacturing something we sell it and we get money or we do some service we work in the office and we get money all these are market activities and these include production of goods or services including government service and non market activities are the production for self consumption so here it is not meant for selling but it is meant for self consumption for in our own use in our own families so it is called self consumption or non market activities so everything that is aimed at getting money that is market activity and ever anything that we do for my own purpose or my own family's purpose then that is non market activity for example i cultivate some vegetables in my kitchen garden and i don't go and sell it i just pluck and make a ring for my own family and that is a non market activity so i look after my family or i look after my younger one i don't get any money i don't get any salary that is non market activity so we can say most of the work that our mothers are doing at home cleaning the house looking after the children cooking food all these are non market activity they don't get any money they don't get any reward they are just doing it for their own family same way all the works that we do at home maybe making the house repairing the house cleaning the house all these are non market activities so that is meant to, not meant for bringing any profit to the people but it is meant for just supporting their family then due to historical and cultural reasons due to historical and cultural reasons 
there is a division of labor between men and women in their family. So, most of our families, there is different, different works are there. What men are doing is different from what women are doing. So, there is, that is from time immemorial onwards, that is the cultural tradition of India. Certain works are meant for men, certain works are meant for women and so on. And women generally look after domestic quarrels and men work in the fields. So, women see the works in the house and men go and work in the field. That is a general cultural, cultural culture of India. And Sakha's mother, Sheila, cooks food, cleans utensils, washes clothes, cleans the house and look after her children. And Sakha's father, Bhutha, cultivates the field sells the produce in the market and earns money for the family. So in the case of that two boys we saw, one boy's mother was working in the family, Sakal's mother was working in the family, clean her house, and cook food for her family, look after the children and so on. While the man will go and work in the family, in the field, produce something, go and sell it in the market and with that money they will manage the house. So that is a different activities of man and woman. Sheila is not paid for the services delivered for upbringing of the family. Buddha earns money. So the woman was doing a lot of work at home, but they are non-market activities. She was not getting any salary for that. But the man is working in the field and he is getting money for that because he can go and sell it in the market and he will get money for that produce. If he produces some vegetable in the market, in the field, he can go and sell it in the market and get money. That is how he, is, he was doing market activity and his wife was doing non-market activity. Women are not paid for their service delivered in the family. Their work is not accounted in the national income which is a sum total of the goods and services produced in the country. So, these non-market activities that is not included when we calculate the income of the country. So, income of the country is calculated by all the works that are produced, all the market activities that are done by the people of a country. We put together, we calculate how much this person has earned, how much this person has earned. So, the total money earned by or total goods produced by the people that is calculated together and that is called the national income of the country. So, these non-market activities or the women's service at home that is not included there. Gita, mother of Vilas, earn an income by selling fish. Thus, women are paid for their work when they enter the labor market. Their earning like that of their male counterpart is determined on the basis of education and skill. So in the other case we saw about Vilas and his mother was selling fish. So she was doing a market activity. She was selling fish and she was getting money for that. So it is based on the skill. She was, she was knowing only how to sell the fish. Therefore he, she started doing that. So education helps individual to make better use of the economic opportunities available before him. Education and skill are the major determinant of the earning of any individual in the market. So, if anybody wants to do this market activity, then they should have knowledge, they should have skill, and they should have the idea about that work and so on. A majority of the women have meager education and low skill formation, and women are paid low compared to men. Most women work where job security is not there and various activities relating to legal protection is meager. Employment is, in this sector is characterized by irregular and low income. So, in our country, men have got more opportunity to do this non, sorry, this market activity because they are more educated, more than women, men are educated, they are more trained, they are more skilled and so on. Therefore, they are able to do market activity. So in case women go and do the market activity, since because of their law training, law skill, they are paid very low. And their uh, job is not permanent. Sometimes when there is extra work, they will be called to the work. And that work, extra work is over, they say you can go home. We will call you next time. So the women's 
job security is not there they are they pay very less and they are sometimes they have work sometimes they don't have work so they are really suffering and employment in this sector is characterized by irregular and low income in this sector there is an absence of basic facilities like maternity leave child care and other social security systems so women are also not given the security they for example maternity leave they are not able to take if they are taking leave then they will not be paid or to help them to give them free time for looking after the children the opportunity is not there and so on and <coughs> however women with high education and skill formation are paid at par with the men among the organized sector teaching and medicine attract them the most so now the situation has changed women also started getting high skill and education and so so they are also able to do market activity earn money just like men so now men and women they are able to get equal salary because they are also trained properly they are also skilled properly so the style in india the system in india is changing and among the organized sector teaching and medicine attract the most so women take up a lot of post as a teacher or they take up medicine they become nurse they become doctor and so on and some women have entered the administrative and other services including those which need high levels of scientific and technological service so these days women also take up different fields or uh, training they also join administrative sector they become IAS IPS officers so that they are also able to do market activities so women who have got that high training high knowledge high skill they are able to take up high levels of job and they are able to show their real learning technology and they are able to get high salary like men and ask your sister or your classmate what she would like to take up as a career so you can ask your own uh, women at home maybe your sister or if you are not sister ask your sisters ask your friend female friend what is their plan what task or what career she likes to take up what job she likes to do when she is grown up after completion of the ex education and so on so we need to have that idea in our mind the parents will be telling you directing you apart from that you also should have a clear idea in your mind what you want to become or who you should become or what position you should hold what job you should do what training you should take all this you must have a very clear idea in your mind then your life will be progressing step by step all the investment that you make in your life it will turn out to be very fruitful and at the end you will get very good return you will be able to get back all that you invested more than what you invested you will be getting back so it will not be a loss so the investment that you make now do not think it is a waste of time so but invest properly so that you will get back rich dividend rich reward so try for that and always remember the benefit that you get it is also the benefit of the country you become a part a partner with the country in order to develop the country and help your brothers and sisters in the country so let us try for that and always give the best investment for our future to form this human resource so we shall end it up today have a nice day